Yeah, uh, thank you, Carter. Um, quick turnaround, obviously from Saturday night. Um, you know, disappointed in, in the result on Saturday night. Uh, we probably got back to Miami around 4.35 in the morning. Had to sleep really fast and had to uh, turn our attention quickly to, uh, to Pitt because this is a team that um, I suppose the last three years, uh, both teams have had a hard time scoring points, uh, highly competitive games. Um, Pat Narduzzi's team this year is filled with fourth and fifth year juniors and seniors. Um, their defensive front is outstanding. Uh, and they're going to challenge you with man coverage for everything you do uh, on the back end. And then obviously this will be our fourth year uh, going against our starting quarterback, Kenny Pickett. So um, they're coming off of back-to-back -back heartbreaking one-point losses, both kind of, you know, almost fluky in nature in terms of how they, they went down. And that's just, you know, that's life in the ACC. The games are going to be very competitive. And uh, we expect a highly competitive game on Saturday. We're happy that we're back at home and, and, uh, and actually happy to have a noon kickoff. Um, and uh, and get to play under the sun a little bit. And with that, I'll open up for questions. Great, thanks, Coach. We'll start with uh, Chris Stockton inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Manny, do you have an update on John Campbell? And then also with that, uh, Zion Nelson, obviously a guy that played a lot last year, not as much this year. Just what have you seen with him? And and I know, um, you know, the weight changes and improvements there. Has that taken some time to adjust? Or just your thoughts on, on Zion? Weight meaning like body weight changes? Yeah, he's added a lot of weight since he's arrived, and I don't know if that is part of the reason, if he's still adjusting to that. Um, no. So. no, 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 not at all. And in fact, really going to the game, uh, John and Zion were, were splitting series, and, and we felt like we had two starting quality um, left tackles. Uh, we, we expect John to be okay going forward, but I think you'll see Zion and John uh, both taking reps to tackle. Okay, next we'll go to David Lake from 24-7. David, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, understanding, I guess, uh, with, uh, with the cliche of, you know, football can be a copycat game, do you, do you expect with, you know, what Clemson did in terms of stacking the box and forcing the receivers to win on the outside, do you think that defenses in the future are going to follow that, that blueprint? And, and do you think Pittsburgh – has the personnel to, to pull that type of look off? And then I got to follow up. <laughs> uh, you know, Pat Narduzzi very well, but that's that's what he's been doing since he was at Michigan State. That's what they've been doing every year that they've been at Pittsburgh. They're going to put as many people um, as they can find close to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to play press man-to-man -man, uh, on the outside. And uh, they're going to force you to throw the ball down the field and win some one-on-ones down the field. That's just, that is just simply who they are and, and what they've been. And um, so... You know, but 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 not but going backwards. You know, some of the things that we saw from from Clemson. That's not like that's not. We've seen that before as well. It's not like that was something that. Oh my gosh, where did this come from? So um, um, you have to give credit to Clemson. Obviously, their players played very hard and 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 made the plays uh, and kept us off of a rhythm. And um, but it, like I said, that's just you know, you know, that's just all part of the game of football. And then I'm curious, just your younger receivers. You you see them in practice. We don't. But you know, I guess the freshmen. How are they coming along? You know, do you feel like any of them are getting close to, you know, seeing the field in a meaningful way? And, uh, you know, do they show some of the traits of being able to make contested catches or, or get separation on a consistent basis? Yeah, but it's, yeah, we were, we're very, we're very excited about those guys. We're very excited about their development, but it's, it's over, it, we're oversimplifying it. If we talk about, you know, for example, creating separation or, or, making contested catches, you have, there's a thing that has to happen even before that. And that's the details um, of a lot of things that we did really well until we got into Clemson. And that's what everybody had to sort of self-analyze is that why did a lot of the little nuances of my game. And, and again, when however many guys play in a game, you have the team has one overall performance, which is easy to see, but within a team's overall performance, there's all these individual performances. And why did my performance, why, did, why was I not behaving the same way that I behave on the practice field or in the previous three? So it's not just, an, uh, it's, it's easy to say, well, gosh, you know, this guy has a speed to do this or the ability to do that. It's, it's a nuance of how to run a route, how to stack a guy, um, how to give the quarterback room to throw the ball. You know, those type of things are all a big part of, uh, of playing wide receiver. So I think as the season goes on, I think we'll continue to, to, to roll our guys and, and, and play our depth. But, uh, but at some point, you know, you also have to give credit to the guys that you're playing against as well. Um, and, you know, and, and there's, no, nothing, there's no, no wrong in that. 
Okay, next we'll go to Gary Furman from Kane Sport. Gary, go ahead. Hey, Manny, how are you? Um, so on Saturday and again earlier today, you talked a little bit about uh, Miami arrogance uh, in terms of always thinking that we should just you know walk out on the field and beat Pittsburgh and Virginia and Virginia Tech and all of these teams in the ACC and um, – it obviously, there you know there have been ups and downs in that department for many years now. Are, are you directing that at your players, the fans, just in general? And you know, just what's the the, the thinking behind that message that you're clearly trying to send? What we're talking about is inside this program that we have res we we're 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 taking an approach of having respect for everybody that we can play. Because what we've proven is that when we play well, we can beat anybody we play against, and when we don't play well we can get beat by anybody we play against. And so I think what we just talk about in, in, in here is just having a respect that we can't just think we're Miami and we are more talented than, let's say, uh, Pitt or whoever, because we've been saying that for many years. And, when, and, and just what, when I say, when I'm, to maybe this way I'm answering your question, our players have been hearing that for many years, um, regardless of who the head coach is, and it's not been serving them well. So what we talk about is, is that we have to have respect for who we're playing. We have to understand that our chance of victory comes through our level of preparation, our level of work, and our level of, of, of staying together and, and believing in the team. Um, and that's what we talk about. The arrogance is not just to believe, well, you know, I was rated this coming out of high school, therefore this is what should happen. That's, that's probably the arrogance I'm speaking of. Right? Okay, next we'll go to Barry Jackson from the Herald. Barry, go ahead. Hi, Manny. I know the value, obviously, of experience in games like Saturday, but when you determine, you know, and it was pretty clear you all are not at Clemson's level yet, are you more inclined to play young guys at positions where maybe the performance wasn't great? And I'll go back to what David Lake asked you about receiver. Once again, we saw Wiggins, Pope, Harley with the most snaps. Are you now inclined to take a fresh look at Peyton, at Michael Redding, who didn't have an offensive snap, at Keyshawn Smith, et cetera? Yeah, I think the best way to answer that is we are always, always inclined to play whoever we feel like gives us the best chance to win. There's simply no seniority. There's simply no that, – that, that's not how we make any decision in terms of anybody on the depth chart. That's how we started to, to, to freshmen on the offensive line last year. That's how when we got here defensively in 2016, we started three – true freshman linebackers, um, Malik Young, Joe Jackson, all these guys started as true freshmen. So um, we love our jobs and we love the University of Miami too much to not play the players who give us the best chance to win. Um, so, I mean, that's that's it. But but to now the second part of that is we're also in the player development business and all of these guys are continuing to be developed and developed, developed um, because everyone sort of develops at a different level. And, and, and I think as time goes on and the guys get more experience, you'll see more and more of a of our young class that we think is very special. Thank you. Okay, next we'll go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Uh, hey, Manny. Um, obviously, this is a different season, um, and you guys have played the number one team in the country, but it's now 0-4 coming off of a bye week. I'm wondering if you saw any similarities at all in, turn of, in terms of mentality uh, from this team coming off a of bye week compared to last year. I know that was a problem. And I guess, can you speak to maybe why it is that you guys just haven't been able to have the success coming off of bias? Yeah, I mean, I get, I get the narrative there, Manny, but I mean, do we, do we think of all the reasons why that game went the way that went, that was coming off of a bye was, I mean, and, and, and here's why I say, how, how would you quantify that? I mean, how, like in terms of talking, I mean, I mean, it, we lost, therefore, like you say, I mean, it's, it's, it's a loss coming off of a bye, but I don't know how to quantify because it, if, if we had to play the week before, then it would the game would look like this. I mean, there's no way to measure that. I think that's, you know, I think that's Miami and Clemson in a game when we made a lot of mistakes. Um, did the bye cause us to line up four inches off sides on fourth down and four when you've got a great chance for a, a stop on the first drive of the game? I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It, it, again, when you compare this year's team to last year's team and some of the things that we did, I mean, we couldn't beat a Conference USA team last year, right? So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Okay, next we'll go to David Ferrones from the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. 
Hey, Manny, uh, do you have any new uh, injury updates on Brevin Jordan? Or we saw John Campbell leave. Uh, also, uh, Zach McLeod, he stayed in the game. But then, uh, you know, you never know if, you know, later on in the week. And then the other thing I wanted to ask about is uh, Gilbert Fryerson's play. Um, although he did have that one uh, play where I guess he lost contain and Travis Etienne scored at such time. I mean, he was all over the field, a lot of tackles for loss. Uh, he kept up with Etienne on a pass breakup uh, deep down the sideline. Uh, just his development. Gilbert was awesome. Um I think the thing you asked about injuries, we will have a staff meeting later today and, and get some further updates. But right now, I don't have anything else to add from, from what we talked about on Saturday. Um, Gilbert Farson was was uh, maybe our best player on defense. I mean, he and uh, Bubba Bolden, again, played outstanding again. I think he's going to get named the ACC defensive back of the week again, which is awesome for Bubba. Um, even the play, when you talk about when, when Etienne bounced and scored, that really, um, we, we were misaligned. There should have been a safety line about outside right there. So, um his 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 intelligence level for the game is really starting to show, and um, in that setting, you have to really know, you have to feel confident not just in your abilities physically, but in your abilities mentally. I think that's what really shows um, as we analyze a lot of performances. and And um, and Gilbert is has such a great awareness of what's going on in the field, what teams are trying to do against us. Um, it really helps, and I think it, I think his play uh, Saturday showed because of it. Uh, great. Next, we'll go to Susan Miller Degnan from the Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Manny. Uh, yeah, Bubba Bolden was just named the uh, ACC Defensive Back of the Week, and he's just he's just all over the place making plays. Um, and he always seems totally into the game, no matter no matter what's happening, no matter if you're down or not. Um, you know, what specifically does he do that makes him shine like that? In in a lot of areas. Well, he plays, he plays extraordinarily hard, plays with great effort. Um, you know, I think he played about 90 snaps of football um, on Saturday, which is extra, it's probably a game and a half. Um, he still starts on our punt team. He's sprinting down the field to cover punts. You know, I mean, he's just a, he's a guy that's completely committed for the team. Um, obviously, he has the ability to make a play. His tackling has gotten better and better um, every week. And... Um, it's just been fun. It's been fun to watch him develop. I think he's having fun now, finally getting in, into the flow of a season because, you know, last year was sort of, you know, he couldn't play, then he played, then he got injured. You know, the year before he had some issues so where he couldn't play. So this is really the first time in, in quite a while um, that, you know, Bubba's been able to play week in, week out. And I think his, uh, I think he's developing because of it. What's his influence on the, maybe on the younger players or, you know, what, what his leader like stuff? He yeah, does? I mean, he's, he's an excellent leader and, and, um, you got to have it in the secondary, especially with what uh, happened to us in the first half. You know, you lose Amari, you know, poor Brian Balaam, who, who's going to be a really, really good player, but he gets thrown in there um, in that setting. And I thought Brian did a really nice job with his tackling and running. Didn't look out of place physically on the field, but there's some assignment things and communication in the back end that um, that's a big ask to, to throw a freshman in there. And so to have a guy like Bubba that can sort of direct the traffic uh, in the back end really helps. Thanks. Next, we'll go to Tom D'Angelo from the Palm Beach Post. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Manny. Uh, more on, on, on Bubba. I guess the, the first half, I mean, after after Amari was ejected, I, how much was on him? Basically, he was uh, he was the back line. He was it for experience for you. I mean, so he, does that even show more, that, uh, kind of the, more impressive of what he did, having all that thrown on him, especially early in that game? Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, there, there's actually a play where um, um, right before halftime, actually right before the block field goal for a touchdown, um, Lawrence runs a QB draw and Bubba goes down there and and, um, and kind of gets the first hit on him. And Balaam, you know, Bubba was supposed to be deep middle and Balaam was going to blitz on that and Balaam was a little confused. So so Bubba just kind of told him what to do. He said, I'll go, you just play deep middle. So just having that guy that's that's a, a calm head back there that can sort things out and not just make himself better, but make the players around him better. I mean, that to me is what you want out of a leader. So that's just one little glimpse of, of his impact on the team. And did he maybe, um, I don't know, benefit from not, I know he played, I guess, toward the end of last year, but, but he did have time to sit, to watch into not having to be thrown into the entire, right. The whole, the whole year last year, did any of that or, Oh, because he was a because he already played. Did that even matter? But or did that help him get used to the? Team? Uh, I mean, I mean, certainly in terms of just understanding the scheme, you know, that could help. But but um, you know, everybody gets better by playing, and I think that's why Bubba's uh -huh. playing now better than he did in the Louisville game or even in the UAB game. I, you know, you just 
Um, it did, it did give him an understanding of how we do things around here and his knowledge for the defense. And he can actually play both of our safety positions. He can play to the field or to the boundary, which is a great benefit to us. Um, but it's, it has been fun watching him just, you know, continue to develop and grow week after week. Thank you. Okay, we'll wrap up with one more question from David Lake. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you about Corey Flagg. He, he played quite a bit in the game. I'm curious, was that the plan going in, or was it a function of Zach getting kind of dinged up early in the game? I know Zach kept playing, but uh, – and then just your assessment of how Corey, Corey did play. Well, Corey, Corey and Zach don't play the same position. Corey was in a mic, and Zach was playing Will. Um, Corey played very well. Um, we, we, we thought Corey and Sam broke so – Sam – um, gave up the first touchdown of the game. But other than that, we thought both those guys played well and will continue to, to push for more playing time. Corey is just so instinctive um, and has a great feel. Um, and some of the plays he made, just, just getting thrown in his, his first, maybe his first snap or first snap or two, um, they ran a little toss play at Etienne. That's something that they weren't, it wasn't really a big part of their offense. And you know, he's got to come across a, um, a tackle that's got an angle on him, does a great job, uses his hands and runs over there and puts his, uh, his shoulder in Etienne and, and makes a really secure tackle. So um, Corey Flagg didn't look out of place at all, which I thought was very encouraging for us. Um, we've seen that on the practice field, but just to get a chance to get him in there and to do that. And um, and then Sam, like I said, other than the one play, Sam continues to do good things. Sam has just been hampered by a foot problem, you know, that that's uh, – you know, that he's just been, you know, he's been gutting, gutting it out, you know, but I think it's taken, it, um, taking some time from him. But, um, but we, we all, we all know what Sam can do and, and he's going to be an important part of our rotation going forward.